This morning, this message is for everyone. Of course, every Sunday, this is for everyone. No one is exempted with this. This message is about rebuke and correction to all of us. Overcoming disagreement. This is our topic this morning. Sino sa inyo ang walang disagreement sa asawa, sa mga anak, sa mga kaibigan, kamag-anak, o sa church? There, there will always be disagreement. Tandaan nyo yan. It's how you handle disagreement is so important. This is my goal, to provide you biblical perspective and conflict resolution or resolutions. Your responsibility is to dive into the Word. Submit to the Word. And as you grow in maturity and understanding of God's view of this issue, figure it out how to take action. After this, take action in your own life for your own good and for the good of the body. Everything we discuss from here, here on out will be counter cultural. Ma Pilipino ka, ma Hapon ka, ma Chinese ka, Americano ka, o ano man ang tribe mo, sakop lahat ito. We have to submit ano man ang kultura mo against man sa kultura nyo o sa tradisyon nyo, we have to submit to the Word of God. Because this is the only guidelines para maging maayos ang relasyon natin bilang magkakabatid at bilang iglesia, bilang isang familia. Where the world say, fight back! God says to humble ourselves. Where the world screams for justice. Wala hostisya ang ginagawa nila ito. God teaches forgiveness. We're judging our brothers or sister where there is anger and hatred. Where, there is, where the world points finger, God says, examine yourself. Sabi nga ni Jesus, ang sino mang walang kasalanan, siyang unang bumato. And everyone left. I don't know why we are so quick to judge, to condemn. The world is like that, but the church is not like that. Let us examine ourselves before judging our brothers and sisters where there is anger and hatred. God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you think he's not your neighbor, then Jesus said, love your enemies. No exemption. We are commanded to love one another, to love our neighbor, even our enemies. Let me show you three examples and models of over overcoming disagreements. I want you to listen carefully. Kung meron kayong disagreements sa mga kapatid, business partners nyo, sa familia nyo, at sa iglesia ito, I want you to listen carefully. And in the last days, you will live to become overcomers. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, 23 and 24, this is the Jesus medal, model. We'll just read what the Bible, what the Word of God says. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, na offend ang kapatid, and the Holy Spirit convicted you, 
the Holy Spirit reminded you na meron ka na-offend, Jesus said, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Bali, walang kwenta ang mga alay natin kay Lord, mga papuri natin kay Lord, pagsamba natin kay Lord, even our material offerings, financial offerings, unless we are reconciled and restored with our brethren whom we offended. And then in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus said, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you, if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector, a sinner, in other words. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you shall loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And if two of you agree as touching anything that they will ask for, it shall be done by my Father who is in heaven. In Matthew chapter 5, you offended somebody. Leave your gift, be reconciled, go to them and be reconciled, and then go back and offer your gift. Don't let them acceptable. In Matthew 18, if they offended you, you have to go. Wala kang choice. In the Old Testament, an eye for an eye. Kung anong ginawa nila sa'yo, yan ang gagawin mo sa kanila. But according to Jesus' teaching, you have offended somebody, nasaktan mo, na-stumble ay isang kabatid, when the Holy Spirit reminded you, go to them and ask forgiveness, be reconciled. In Matthew 18, ikaw ang na-offend nila, hindi na ikaw ang naka-offend. Ikaw ang na-offend. The Word of God still says, go to them and tell them that you were offended sa kanyang ginawa. And then there is this process in Matthew chapter 18. Now, this is completely different sa Old Testament and then sa New Testament. And of course, sa mundong ito, uh, iba ang kanilang pinapractice. Of course, you cannot blame them. They are not born again. They do not, do not have the Spirit of God in them and they do not read the Bible. Okay? Jesus Christ gave the highest standard para sa ikabubuti ng bawat isa, ng lahat-lahat. Na-offend ka, pumunta ka. Naka-offend ka, pumunta ka. That's your choice. Now, dahil ikaw ang na-offend, sa kung ikaw naka-offend, pumunta ka and ask forgiveness, madali na yun, di ba? Kasi yun, madaling macho chapter 5 eh. The Holy Spirit reminded you that you have stumbled or offended somebody and then when you humbly obey the Lord, papunta ka pa lang, ayos na ang problema. Because you swallowed your pride, you obeyed the Holy Spirit, and then, naghintay lang kapatid, ready na siya, and then, you will be reconciled. But this one, in Matthew 18, is different. Ikaw na-offend, nasaktan ka ng todo-todo, nalamangan ka, okay? And napahiya ka ng todo-todo. So you, being a believer, being uh, a child of God, you have to go. To go to that person that offended you. This is the biblical way. This is Jesus' model. Tingnan nyo. There are four ways to do it. Yung Jesus' model. Go alone and directly talk to the person. 
Ang tanong, anong ginagawa mo when you are offended so severely? Do you practice this? Or do you practice the world way? The worldly way? Ipagchismis? Pumunta ka sa taong hindi concerned? And then, sabihin mo ang ginawa nila sa'yo? That is not the born again way. That is not the Christian way. That is a de demonic, devilish way. Walang kaalam-alam ang tao, tapos sabihin mo ang ginawa sa'yo ng taong ito, eh, hindi ka, you are not for unity, you are for division and for the destruction of everyone. Jesus' way is, ikaw na offend, pumunta ka, halimbap, uh, I offended Pastor Ted. I, say, I said sorry to Pastor Ted. Hindi ko alam na offend ko siya. So I, when I said sorry, he has forgiven me. But when Pastor Ted offended me, pupunta ko kay Pastor Banjo, that's wrong. I have to go to Pastor Ted. Siya na offend sa akin eh. And I will tell him how hurt I am. That's a biblical way. And then pagkatapos, kung kinausap, di uh, ay makipag-ayos, then I will, uh, I will bring one or two brothers or sisters or bring it to my pastor or to my cell leader or my tribal leader to help me to go to Pastor Ted. And then ayo pa rin niya, then this is the time to bring it to the church. Dinala na sa church, matigas pa rin ang ulo ni Pastor Ted, then, sorry, ang tawag dyan, excommunication. We don't belong to this church. Salut ka sa iglesia ng ito. Nagpapakumbaba ng kapatid. Handa na makipag-restore sa'yo. Ayaw mo pa. Then leave this church because you are not you do not belong to this family. You do not belong to this church. Baka maging salut ka pa at maging cancer ka pa at magkakaroon ng buong cancer ang buong church. This is Jesus' way. Stop doing the old way, the demonic way of destroying our brother and our sister, of dividing the church. Jesus' way is the best way. Look at the example of Paul, Paul's model. It is in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 32. Let us read. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. Kung ikaw ay born again, don't live a worldly way. Stop living the old ways. Stop living a worldly, a Gentile way uh, lifestyle. In the, what is a Gentile way? Their mind is so futile. They are darkened in their understanding, separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. This is the old way. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity as they are full of greed. Greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in Him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard of your former way of life, this is the new way. Put off, now put on. Okay? Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and then put on the new self. Sabi niya, itabi mo na, i-renounce mo na, tama na ang pamumuhay bilang makamundong ito, makasalanan, no? Instead, isuot mo ang bago mong identity, which is in Christ. 
put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness and for our new self therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for we are all members of one body in your anger do not sin do not let the sun go down while you are still angry and do not give the devil a foothold how do you give the devil a foothold when you do not go directly to the person involved how do you give the devil a foothold by sharing it to others who are not involved by not forgiving by being proud and arrogant and conceited anyone who is who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need do not let any unwholesome talk what is unwholesome talk chismis anong tawag dito marites tsaka parites mare alam mo ba ang uh, up, update ngayon alam mo ba ang nangyari kay pastor banjo ngayon alam mo ba ang nangyari kay pastor frank ngayon Ano ba yung update ngayon, pare? Yun po, hindi gawa ng mga mananang palataya. Hindi gawa ng mga born again. Gawa ng mga tao na ang kanilang kolik ay manira at magwasak at mag-create mag ng away and division and partition. Hindi po galing kay Lord John. Sa demonyo po yun, no? Sabi niya, Put, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Kung hindi nakakabuti, shut your mouth. Kung nangangatindila mo, sabi mo sa akin para putulin ko na lang, okay? Hindi nakakabuti, nakakasira. It does not help the family. It does not help relationship. It destroys our unity, our love for one another, our respect for one another. And don't expect God is with you. I will assure you, it's the devil who is with you and his demons. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by being unforgiving, by being arrogant, by being conceited, by being uh, unforgiving. With whom you were sealed on the day of the, uh, for the day of redemption, get rid of all bitterness. Ito na po. Rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. Alam mo ba ang, ang sanhin ng maraming nararandaman sa katawan na hindi nadidetect ng mga kahit na gano, kahit tech ang medical equipment? Ito po, bitterness, anger, rage, brawling. And po, slander. Isa sa mga matinding sanhi ng bitterness and unforgiveness is arthritis. Natutuyo ang buto. Yung pagitan ng buto sa buto. Yung ligaments. Because of bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness. Uh, kaya pagka nag EGR kayo, when you begin to release those bitterness and hatred and unforgiveness, suddenly the love of God will rule your heart. Suddenly, there will be, there will be this peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then miraculously, those natuto yung pagitan ng buto sa buto ay marirevive kakaroon ng oil. Ha? Kakaroon ng oil yung ligaments kaya wala na sakit, pananakit. Amen po ba? Praise God. So, sabi the Bible, be compassionate. This is, these are short words. Be kind, be compassionate to one another, be forgiving. Why? Because God has forgiven us in Christ. Eh, kung ikaw ay pinatawad ng Diyos, 
Yung pakayang, ang laki na nagawa mo kasalanan, yung pakayang gap, gakulangot na nagawang kasalanan ng isang kapatid. Kaya, what is Paul's model? Put off the behavior of the old man. Ano ba ang asal at ugali ang pagkatao mo nung hindi ka born again? Sabi niya, ano man yan, kung nung hindi ka born again, talagang chismoso ka, chismosa ka. Ang nakakalungkot eh, akala natin, babae lang mga chismosa eh. No? Ang dami rin chismoso mga lalaki. Kasi walang magawa eh. Alam mo bakit? Yan ang gawain nila. Yan ang kanilang business. Yan ang kanilang trabaho. Magchismis. Kasi walang trabaho eh. But if a person is busy, ay wala siyang panahon sa chismis. Wala siyang panahon sa mga ganyang paninira. Because they are too busy being productive to heal others, to restore others, to help others, to bless others. Kung walang magawa, sobrang inggit, hindi natutuwa na ang iba ay natut- nagtatagumpay, gusto kaya, gusto kasi nila, sila lang mayaman, sila lang magaling, sila lang sikat, at ang lahat ay hindi na. You see how selfish those people are? They cannot rejoice. They cannot rejoice with the people who are blessed, who are successful, and who are victorious. I don't know but di sila natutuwa na mas pogi ako sa kanila na mas malusog ako sa kanila, dapat magalak sila. Kaya e kung ako pa ang papasanin nila, bubuhatin nila, tutul- lalo nila magagawa yun. Kung papasanin nila ako, bubuhatin nila ako, palagi nilang tinutulungan, ay lalo nila magagawa. But jealousy is not from the Lord, it's from the devil. Yan ang actually ang ugat ng lahat eh, inggit eh. Kaya nagsusunsul eh. Sinusunsul, talagang sinisingitan. Hindi pwede yan. Hindi maka, maka kristyano yan. Hindi born na ganyan. Maka demonyo yan. Hindi ganyan ang gawa ng mga mananampalatiya. I would rather be wrong than emphasizing you are wrong. For the sake of this church and for our family and for our relationship. Don't let the devil enter your mind just like the like, just like Judas the devil entered his mind and you welcome it you have allowed the devil you have given the devil an opportunity nagamitin ka at the cost of the brothers and the sisters at the cost of your family and at the cost of the church put off hubarin mo na i-renounce mo na Ipako mo na. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, the best way is, I've been crucified with Christ. And it's I no longer live. I do not live in my old self anymore. The old lifestyle, pinako na sa cross. And the life I live now, I live in faith. I live in Christ. And to live in Christ is to heal, to help, to encourage, to bless, to pray, to edify, to build up, not to destroy. Ang laking pananagutan yan. Kung sakaling born again ka, ang laking pananagutan yan. Pagdating ni Lord, He died for that person, tapos ganyan ang gagawin mo. I've been here for almost 40 years. I've seen people. They come and go. They come and go. And for those who stayed are the people who love the Lord and who loves the body of Christ to build up them carriage. Ang iba nagpagamit sa demonyo and now you do not see them anymore. The consequences is so severe. Hindi po biro. So what's Paul's model? Second model, put on the behavior of a new life. Be compassionate. Be tender-hearted. Be merciful. Be forgiving. Be loving. Be humble, be willing to help, extend help. And then number three, be filled and walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you overcome 
all this conflict na na, na stumble ka, na offend ka, na lamangan ka, the Holy Spirit will help you and it will strengthen you. Pera lang yan. Pero yung brother or sister, kaluluwa yan, napakalaga yan. Jesus died for that brother, for that sister. Pera lang yan. Pwede bang mas marami ang darating? Happy ka ba na nagdurusa ang isang kapatid? Unless you are sadista. Only the devil is happy when you hurt, when you offend, when you destroy a family, a member of the church. Number three, James' model. Let's read James chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, wail. Change your laughter into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up. In verse 6, God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. What is James' model? Submit to God. Kahit na gano katindi ang sakit, ang sugat na natamo mo sa isang kapatid. When you submit to God, God is able to restore and heal that, that hurt, that wound. Kahit na gaano kalalim ang sugat niyan, kahit gaano ka-imposible, once you submit to God, surrender to God, this problem, You may not understand it. Why, why, why these things happen to me? Bakit niya ako nilamangan? Bakit niya ako ginulang? Bakit niya ako sinaktan? Bakit niya nagawa sa akin ito? Lord, I submit to you. I surrender. Kaya na po bahala sa kanya. I have chosen to entrust this situation to you. I have chosen to forgive. These people. That's the best way. Hindi yung hindi ka ako papayag nito. Makipag uh, makipag away ka sa rapan ng buong barangay, sa rapan ng mga tao hindi mananam palataya. Tapos makipag magiskandulo ka at pupunta kayo sa sa unbeliever na judge, sa mga barangay captain sa sinuman na hindi mananam palataya and they will be the, they are watching you the whole people are watching you you cannot do that the barangay captain the judge in this court of appeal or whatever the supreme court these are nothing compared to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we will judge the angels. We are anointed men and women of God. We listen to your problem. We listen to your offense and everything. At alam nyo, walang magagawa ang kapitan, walang magagawa ang judge. Kayo lang ang may magagawa. I cannot do anything. But you can do it. If you will just swallow your pride and humble yourself and ask forgiveness and release forgiveness. I cannot do that. Kayo pa rin ang gagawa. They just listen to you. I will just listen to you. But the, the resolution and reconciliation, it is your job. Kayo na na-offend, kayo na naka-offend. If you will just submit to God and humble yourself, if you will, pangalawa, if you will draw near to God and God will draw near to you, and he will restore. And then lastly, humble yourself before God. Humble yourself before God. If you will read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
kayo na umako sa kasalanan ng iba para maayos lang ang inyong relasyon bilang makakapatid. Di ba mas maganda, sabi ni Apostle Pablo, na ikaw nang umamin kahit na obvious siya ang, 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 ang nakasakit? Sabi niya, for we are brothers and sisters, we're family. Pagwawala ka in front of other people. Pinapanood, naka-video pa. That's not right. That's not Christianity. Niloko ka, lolokohin ko rin. Pinahiya niya ako, papahiya ko rin. That's an Old Testament, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That's not Christianity. Look at our model. Siya na nagpagaling, nag-cast out, nag-bless, nagpakain, gumawa ng lahat ng kabutihan. Anong sinabi ng tao? Ipako siya sa krus, ipako siya sa krus. Does he deserve it? Pilate is not convinced. I found nothing. He is not guilty. I will free him. But the religious leaders, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the elders, elders, mga tinitinghala, nire-respeto ng tao, teachers of the law, experts of the law, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, are the ones instigating to the people, crucify him, crucify him. And he was crucified. Nung nasa krusya, anong sabi niya? Father, forgive them. Siya na, na hindi ka deserving na mapako sa krus, nagdusa sa krus. Anong sabi niya? Forgive them. Dapat sinabi ni Jesus kayo, padala ka ng milyong-milyong ang help. Patay mo lahat siya, nipuli mo lahat siya. But he didn't say that. Forgive them. That's Christianity. Angat ang Christianity in all kinds of religion. Sa ka makita na pinako sa krus, ang mga early Christians, sinusunog sa krus, pinapalapa sa mga leon, at mga, ang mga tigre, nagpupuri, nagpapasalamat, excited sila na makarating sa presensya ni Lord. That's Christianity. No hatred. No bitterness, no anger, but only love. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. If you will read Matthew chapter 18, naalala niyo pa, you will continue sa verse 22 and following. Ngayon niyo yung, yung hari, pinahiraman niya ng 10,000 bags of gold ang isang alipin at nung patawag para magbayad, hindi siya makapagbayad eh paparusana sana eh nagmakaawa nagmakaawa, lumuhod, nagmakaawa at pinatawad naman ng hari nung itong tao, ito 10,000 bags of gold, ang sabi ng Bible sa Matthew 18 makita niya, kapwa niya alipin, sinunggaban, sinakal sa leeg bayaran mong utang mo, bayaran mong utang mo 100 pieces of silver lang ang utang. Siya 10,000 bags of gold. Itong kapwa niya alipin, 100 pieces of silver lang ang utang sinakal. Bayaran mo, hindi ko mabayaran mo. Magmakawa po, lumuhod, magmakawa. Sabi hindi pwede. Pinabilang ko niya. Huwag palabasin niya hanggat mabayaran na kanyang utang. Nakita niya kanyang kapwa alipin. Kaya, ka, ka, kapwa servants sino, nagsumbong sa hari pinatawag ng hari alam sabi ng hari how dare you gakulangot lang ang utang ng kapwa mo alipin ikaw gabundok pinatawad kita tapos hindi ka nagpatawad ikulong yan sabi niya hanggat ni mabayar ang last cent and bring the torturer with him Hindi lang nabilanggo, he was being tortured hanggang din na bayaran ng utang. 
That was what it means not to forgive, not to be restored, not to be humble, not to submit, not to do what God requires of us. You will be tortured. How can you eat? How can you worship? How can you pray? How can you do your regular chores, regular business? When there is this, unforgiveness and greed and envy and bitterness in your heart. That's why no smile, no glow in your face. I want you to open your Bible in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 and 15. Hebrews chapter 12. 14 and 15. Make every effort to live in peace with all men. Hindi lang with our family, hindi lang with our cell members, hindi lang sa church, but to all men. It takes a lot of effort. Make every effort, mag-effort ka Swallow your pride, in other words. Be quick to forgive. Submit to God. Renounce the old self. Embrace the new self in Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's how it, it means to live in peace and harmony with all men. Be holy without holiness. You will not see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God. No one misses the grace of God. Malaking pananagutan, kapatid. And that no bitter root grows up to the cause that cause trouble and defile many. Yeah. Don't allow this root of bitterness grows up. Brings trouble. And defile many. The reason why I'm still standing tall before you and before these people because everyone that I offended, that those who offended me, I have forgiven them already. At gumagawa ako ng effort how I can be reconciled with them. Kahit na ayaw lumapit sa akin, ayaw makiusap sa akin. I am doing my best. I pray for them. Read again, Romans chapter 8, chapter 12, 9 to 18. It's a beautiful, short praises, but all imperative command. Let love, love sincerely. Be filled with hope, fervent in love, fervent, uh, be, practice hospitality. Be reconciled, love one another, agree with one another. Grab it, Paul. If the Holy Spirit convicted you or reminded you of someone you offended, of someone who offended you, after, th after this, make an action. Ask forgiveness from God first and foremost. And let God's love fill your heart. And let the Holy Spirit fill you. Submit to God, draw near to God, humble yourself before God. After this, please do something. Be, restor be restor restored, be reconciled. The behavior you have done, and Christian behavior, ask forgiveness. Be restored as soon as possible or else there will be no peace. Ang hirap po pag walang kapayapaan sa puso. Di makatulog, di makakain, di makapag-focus, di makapag-pray, di ka makapag-worship. Kung born again ka. Pero kung di ka born again, okay lang yun. Pero if you're born again, you cannot do it. Ha? Kung wala kang Manihid na puso mo, hindi ka born again. 
Hindi bo- di ka na born again, no? Because the Holy Spirit will convict you, the Holy Spirit will remind you, then you have to do something. Kung wala kang, <laughs> parang wala nangyari, <laughs> parang mga prostitute, mag- maligo lang, ano nangyari? Wala, you know, wala nangyari. Eh, eh, ganun sila eh. Yan ang buhay nila eh. We, we Christians are not like that. We cannot take it that. We cannot. It will affect our worship, our prayer life. It will affect our performance sa uh, business natin, sa ating trabaho, sa relationship. It, everything is affected dahil walang kapayapaan. Masarap mamuhay na mapayapa. Kahit tuyo at walang ulam, masarap mag- kumain, ang sarap matulog. Sarap magsamba, ang sarap magpuri. Amen po ba? I want you to raise your hands. I want you to, Lord, Lord, examine my heart. Come on, let, let us ask the Lord to examine our hearts, to remind us of all those people that we offended or who offended us. And be reconciled. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the model of Jesus. The model of Paul and the model of James. Lord, we choose to forgive. We choose to humble ourselves. We choose to draw near to you. We choose to submit to you. We choose to love people. We choose, we choose restoration and reconciliation. Hallelujah. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love. Be the Lord and Master of our lives. This is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Magandang umaga po.